The search continues for two objects found in the southern Indian Ocean as investigators look for clues on whether or not they're related to missing Flight 370. Well, joining me now is Luca Centurioni. He is with the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, joining us from San Diego, California. Luca, thanks very much for joining us. So can you shed light on how difficult a task this is for, to actually locate this debris that was spotted by satellite on March 16th? Uh, well, it's essentially um, about finding a moving target. Uh, the satellite images, as you said, are, uh, were collected on, on Sunday, March 16th, and since then, uh, it's most likely that the debris or the two objects uh, have moved. Uh, by how much? Uh, of course, the Australian Navy, which is coordinating the uh, search operations, uh, uh, is running numerical models to make the best prediction of what the objects may be now, and that's where the aircraft and the ships are focusing. Okay, and how uh, we hear about how polluted our oceans are around the world. Um, how about this area of the Indian Ocean? Is it possible that this could be some sort of uh, garbage? Or, I mean, one thing I guess that struck me is that one of them is said to be about 24 uh, meters long. I mean, that's, that's a pretty uh, substantial size. But is it uncommon to find debris that big uh, in this part of the Indian Ocean? Certainly, uh, a little bit north of this area, there is an equivalent of, of the you know, Pacific garbage patch, if you like, to call it that way. Um, however, even in the Pacific, if, when you go to the, the great garbage patch, you don't see much. You typically see blue water. And the, the pollution we like to talk about is mainly made by small uh, pieces of plastic that, you know, are hard to see with your naked eye. Okay, and how familiar are you with data boys, and do they actually help in terms of tracking how uh, debris could possibly uh, float? And I mean, now that we're days on since the Malaysian airline flight went missing, um, what type of technology is needed and how likely is it w if even you do confirm this is debris from the plane, you can actually track the site of impact? At least, you know, several possibilities when you have an object floating in, in the water. If the object is fully submerged, it's going to move uh, more with the ocean currents. Uh, if there is a, um, an emerged part, so there is part of the object sticking out of the water, then the wind, of course, will also have an influence on how this object moves. And, you know, winds and ocean currents are not going necessarily in the same direction. So. Uh, drifting buoys are very helpful for tracking what's in, what's in, you know, completely submerged. And then you need to uh, make some corrections to take into account the wind effect. Uh, of course, there is much more than drifting buoys. When you run a numerical model to make a uh, prediction or try to understand where an object might have gone or where it came from, if you want to backtrack it, you are going to use all the data which is available, which is pretty substantial. We got observations of wind from satellites. We have observations of um, the ocean uh, sea level, still from satellites, sea surface temperature from drifting buoys and also satellites. And you know, you, you want to put everything together into what you think is your best model to come up with your best estimate. Luca Centurioni, thank you very much for joining us from San Diego.